Hey Jane, I'm here with a Blender 2.9 beginner guide for using the mirror modifier. I will demonstrate this by using a very simple example. First I delete the camera, I stick to the default cube this time and I will add a mirror modifier to it for the x-axis. So select it and first tap into edit mode, then I select the move tool and move the cube in edit mode to the left. I do it in edit mode because then the pivot point, the origin of the cube stays at the center. And this is important because this origin is used as the center of the mirror. I go to the modifiers tab and then add a mirror modifier. And you see it works, we have the cube on the other side of the x-axis, which is the default axis of the mirror modifier. So here on the left side, the negative x, we have the original cube. So this is the actual mesh, the geometry. I can modify it in edit mode, for instance move this face with face selection. And you see it is mirrored by the modifier to the other side. There's no geometry actually generated for the mirrored mesh. This happens when the modifier is applied, but I can activate the edit cage of the modifier so that I can select parts of the mesh from the mirrored side as well. Another option is to show or hide the mirror modifier in edit mode so that you only see it in object mode. I have to say I very rarely use this feature. This option is to make it visible or hide it in the viewport. And the last one is the visibility for the render. Then we can define the axis for the mirror, but I'll come back to this later on. Okay, let's continue. Now go ahead and extrude some parts of the original mesh. So I switch to the extrude tool and extrude this face here on the right side. Then I press S to scale it down. And then again extrude along the x-axis towards the center. But as you can see, it doesn't stop there. We're able to extrude to the other side of the x-axis. But most of the time, this is not what you want. And this is where the option clipping comes into play when you check this here in the modifier. And then move the face towards the center. I will use the move tool now for that. Then you see it is clipping at the center. We can't move to the other side. Okay, now let me explain another option and this is Merge. When it is enabled, the vertices that are in a certain range that you can define as well are merged together. It is important to understand when this happens. Short answer, when the modifier is applied, because this is when the geometry for the mirrored side is generated. To apply it, you have to go to object mode and then select apply. After doing this, and we will do this in a moment, these vertices at the center would be merged together. Another thing that is a bit confusing is that once you brought parts of the mesh to the center with clipping enabled, it is not possible to split them again. They stay at the center and it has nothing to do with the merge option. You have to disable clipping again to be able to separate the parts. Okay, now I'll go ahead and add some more geometry. I press Ctrl and the R key to add an edge loop. Then I select other edge loops and scale and you see all these modifications on the other side as well. Then I enable clipping and move this face here to the center. After that, I apply the modifier and then we can have a look at the generated mesh. Alright, this seems to be perfect now. One mesh, the vertices are merged, but there's still a problem. It is this face here at the center. You can see it when I go here to the wireframe mode. It is a face that is redundant. It is hidden inside of the mesh and will make problems when we are going to UV unwrap and texture the mesh. There are two solutions for it. The first one is just to remove it after applying the modifier. But a better choice is before applying the modifier, so I undo this now, not to bring faces to the center with clipping and merging enabled. Remove such faces first, then move edges or vertices to the center of the clipping axis. And in this case, you don't end up with hidden faces and the vertices get perfectly merged. So I remove the face now, then switch to edge selection, select these edges, Enable clipping and merge and then move them to the center. After that, I switch to object mode and apply the modifier. And the result is a mesh without any duplicated vertices or hidden faces. These are things that also advanced users sometimes don't know or just don't think about it. But it's really important to understand it even as a beginner so that you don't run into problems later on. Okay, the next pitfall, I already mentioned it, is the origin of the object 
when using the mirror modifier. Now I move the object here in object mode and this means the origin of the object stays at the center and when I add now a mirror modifier you don't see anything. And this is just because the origin of the object is used as the center of the mirror. You see this now when I go to edit mode and move the mesh you see the mirror works but the center is not at the center of the 3D world. So what can we do to fix it? Well, simple, we just have to move the origin of the cube to the world center. To do this, I press F3 and search for origin 2, and now comes the trick, to the 3D cursor, and this is, at the moment, at the center. So when you are using this, be sure to have the 3D cursor located at 0, 0, 0. Of course, this is just a fix of the fact that you moved your object in object mode and not in edit mode. Okay, a last one which is basically the same as the first one is rotating your object in object mode and not applying the rotation. An example, I'm rotating this object now, this cube, 90 degrees around the y-axis, but I do this in object mode, not edit mode. You see it here in the panel, the rotation for the y-axis is 90 degrees. Okay, now go to edit mode and move it to the left as before, which is perfectly fine. And then I add a mirror modifier and assume that it is mirrored for the x-axis. Again, I'm confused, I don't see anything. And now when I set it for the set axis, it seems to work. Why? Well, this is because the rotation around the y-axis is taken into account. Now, do I need to know around which axis I rotated the object before defining the mirror axis? No. We just have to apply the rotation that we made in object mode and not in edit mode. So I reset the axis to the x-axis and press Ctrl and A to apply the rotation. And by the way, we could also go ahead and apply all transforms, which is a solution for the previous problem as well, because this applies to setting the location, which affects, as we saw, the origin of the object. So to sum it up, if you transformed your object in object mode, then you have to apply the transforms before adding a mirror modifier, or even better, do the transforms in edit mode. Okay, let's have a look at the real world example. Here I have an object at the corner that I want to mirror for the X and the Y axis, and the origin is at the center of the object. So first things first, I set the origin to the 3D cursor. I press F3 and search for origin to 3D cursor. Alternatively, as we saw, we could apply the transforms. Then I go ahead and add a mirror modifier. And this time I set the axis to X and Y. A shortcut is using my free JMesh Tools add-on that does all this stuff with one click. It applies the transforms, it sets the center and then adds the mirror modifier. In the UI that pops up, you can define the axis and also apply the modifier by clicking a button. Of course, it's great to have something like that, but I wanted you to understand the basics. So guys, I hope you liked the tutorial. If you do, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and also follow me on my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Join JNM as a member like Francis Rodriguez and Christopher Leipold. Thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions, add these to the comments below. And I'll see you soon in the next one here on JNM.